can this OnePlus 8 Pro bring me back to Android and actually enjoy the experience? Let's find out in this full review coming up now. So first things first, price. You can pick up the OnePlus 8 Pro in Onyx Black with 128GB of storage and 8GB of RAM for £599 on Amazon. I will link that in the description below. You can get the 256GB variant and 12GB of RAM for £699 on Amazon and OnePlus 8's website. Again, links below in the description. This should be obvious as my channel is so small, but this video is not sponsored by OnePlus in any way. I get nothing from the links below if you choose to purchase after this review. Okay, so specifications. First up, the screen. This is a super AMOLED Quad HD 6.78 inch screen and it looks stunning. Truly, truly stunning. The weight of the phone is around 186 grams, which is far lighter than the iPhone 12 Pro Max or the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra, which share similar screen sizes to this phone. What this also has, the first phone ever to offer that Quad HD display with 120 hertz refresh rate. Now that was back when it was released 10 months ago. Now there's a few phones that do that, including the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. Back then, less than a year ago, with Samsung you could choose 60 hertz or Quad HD display, not both. So now Samsung are following OnePlus, the OnePlus trend of allowing both. What does that mean? Well, the battery is 4,510 milliamps. I have only had the phone a few days, so it is optimal battery health just now. However, I must say, I charged the phone when I got the device. It came with about 40% charge. So I used the 30T warp charging brick and it fully charged within 40 minutes, up to 100, or 45 minutes, up to 100%. I have not charged the phone since. Now that's been two and a half days with no charging and the phone is still around 40%. I don't know if that's because I've not used it too much, which I haven't, but that's goddamn impressive. Long gone are the days where one day was a struggle for flagship phones. The iPhone 12 Pro, the Samsung S21 lineup, the Realme 10, the Huawei P40s. One day is like, that's the minimum. Now you're getting two days pretty comfortably from flagship phones. So to be in two and a half days, potentially this thing's going to go three full days. I am super impressed with that. Now, for the first time on a OnePlus 8 device, you get wireless charging, which if you buy the proprietary charger, pictured up here, because I'm not buying it myself, it'll charge at 30 watts. Now, I am like Mr. Who's the Boss, and I actually only really use a cable to charge my phones. I believe it helps with battery life in the long term, and it's a more efficient way to charge. But the cable goes at 30 watts as well, so charges from 0 to 50% in 30 minutes. Super quick, quicker than any iPhone you'll ever get. The cameras. There are four cameras on the back of this phone. One is random, it's a color, color filter one that um, grew to some sort of fame um, when Lou from Unbox Therapy done a video kind of highlighting 
its see-through capabilities depending on the thickness of the plastic you have. So on an Apple TV box he used as an example, you can actually see through the plastic and see all the components. You can also see through clothes to an extent as well, which got OnePlus in a little bit of bother. Um, not too much though. The other cameras, we've got the 48 megapixel uh, wide camera lens and the 48 megapixel ultra wide camera lens. Special note to that, that's super awesome. Um, it's great to have such a high megapixel quality camera in the ultra wide. Not enough companies actually put time into their ultra wide lenses. Um, you can see some photos taken with that ultra wide um, up above. And the last camera is that telephoto three times optical zoom, which works really well. Again, lots of examples playing in the background here. So I intend to do a comparison video at some point between the OnePlus 8 Pro and the iPhone 12 Pro Max, but that's for another video. Right now I want to talk about the OnePlus 8 cameras. I took this on a walk and you can see here the video, so I'm just walking along the path, normally not trying to keep the phone steady. And the stabilisation that this phone has, and I'm going to put the iPhone 12 Pro Max beside it just for this, it's better. That optical image and stabilisation or the, the gizmos and the software that are keeping it stabilised are incredible. Picture quality is incredible. I mean, this is a, a normal photo. Looks clean, colours are vibrant, but not too overexposed or overblown. This is a portrait. Now again, comparison to the 12 Pro Max, the portrait mode in the 12 Pro Max is probably known as the best and I would say that it is still the best but the OnePlus 8 Pro has a slight advantage in that with the iPhone you have to get so far away from the thing you're trying to snap in portrait mode because it zooms in so close because of the way the camera is set up and that, that, that zoom in the portrait the lens it's using whereas the OnePlus 8 Pro when you go into portrait mode, yes, it crops in, of course, but nowhere near as much as the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Now, other features common in most phones, mid-range to high, super slow motion, that's 4K at 30 or 60 frames per second. Um, you've got the time-lapse lap function, Pro mode, which I never go into really. I mean, the, the uh, iPhone has a Pro Raw and I've never used it and probably will never. I am a tech reviewer and I am obsessed with tech, but I am no photographer. You can tell that from the photos. But I'm no photographer. I don't go too much into color grading and stuff. So I do some on, on these videos you're watching, but not in the, the depths of like a, Marquez or, or anybody, um, really anybody else to be honest, any big YouTuber, they will spend a lot of time on their colour. Or they'll have people spending a lot of time in editing their videos. Um, yeah, super impressed with all the functionality of the camera. Internally the phone is running the Snapdragon 865, which is still a flagship chip, even though the 888 is out, the 865 is going to do whatever task you want, including gaming, buttery smooth at that 120 hertz refresh rate. Um, PUBG is going to look fantastic on this screen. And as I mentioned, the fact that you can get Quad HD Plus at 120 hertz gaming looks amazing. Um, for the first time ever on a OnePlus 8 device, the Pro gets an IP68 rating. Again, OnePlus have never really aimed for that. OnePlus, uh, their strategy has always been like to be the best mid-range phone, if you like. Whereas they made a decision that they were going to try and compete with the flagships. So they had to get an IP rating, um, which meant if you've got a OnePlus 7 Pro, 
you don't have that pop-up camera that they, they, they had last year. You've now got the punch hole camera. I hear a lot of flack online for the punch hole camera, but I don't mind it at all. Now, again, you have to remember that I am coming from uh, an iPhone. <laughs> I hate the notch on that iPhone. I hate it. So there's rumours that um, Apple are maybe going to bring a hole punch before they get rid of the notch completely. That's cool. I'll, I'll take a hole punch every day of the week um, because it's for Face ID which is more secure. Apple are all about security. But this phone here opens up like instantly with your face or that under the screen fingerprint reader which works every time every time so again oneplus giving options android giving options that apple don't give so that's the oneplus 8 pro that's its key features specs cameras everything you need to know to give an advised decision on whether you need to purchase this phone. Now that's the next big thing. Should you purchase this phone or who should purchase this phone? If you are looking for an Android flagship phone under £800, you will do no better than the OnePlus 8 Pro. Bearing in mind you can actually pick it up for under £600. That's half the price of the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. Is this half the phone? Absolutely not. This is only just shy of that brand new S21 Ultra. So is it the best Android phone on the market? No, probably not. I think the Samsung takes that. Is this a phone that could sway iOS users over to Android, 100%. If you have an older device and you're looking to upgrade and you're not particularly integrated into the Apple ecosystem, so you don't have oh, everything on your iCloud, a HomePod mini, a Mac, an iPad, an Apple Watch, take a look. Take a look at that OnePlus. It is really really good bang for your buck so am I switching to Android <clears throat> watch this space to find out thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you all soon